guys, it's Sherry. I hope that you're having a fantastic day. Y'all, we are going to make some paper crafting magic happen today. Stay tuned. my channel I am so glad that you decided to stop by and spend a portion of your day with me and guys I promise you this you'll never be disappointed in this channel we are bringing you some of the best paper crafting on planet YouTube I am going to be using some of those gift boxes that I get from the Dollar Tree now a gift box is a gift box so whether you're purchasing them from Dollar Tree you have them in your stash or you're getting them from another store the concept that I'm about to show you it's going to work. So you don't have to have these Dollar Tree gift boxes to have a successful project such as the one we're doing today. And these are the small gift boxes. So they measure almost eight by 11 by one and a quarter. So the sizes that they have listed on here are 7.78 by 10.87. So to help you visualize the size of this, it is about the size of an eight by 11 piece of paper. And so in this box, you get six of these and it'll make three gift boxes, top and bottom. But as y'all know, on this channel, we always take something and repurpose it to fit what we want it to be. And here is what I wanted it to be. Can't see the inside yet, but I promise you it is going to blow you away. This is the outside and I just covered it in some beautiful black and white and green but it's still autumn themed paper, but it's just a more muted take on autumn papers. So if you're watching this video and you haven't subscribed, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. You will not be disappointed. So y'all know what time it is. It's time to make it. All right, y'all. So here is a closer look at this fabulous project. When finished, it is going to measure seven and seven eighths across, four and three quarter inches this way, and it'll be one and one quarter of an inch deep. And so I decided to go with this beautiful black and white buffalo plaid with the muted white pumpkins all around it and then that little splash of green. And if you're looking for this paper, this particular paper is from Hobby Lobby. So if you don't have a physical Hobby Lobby in your area, Hobby Lobby is online. So at the top, I created this little opening so that we could pull some of that beautiful crinkled seam binding through, or you can use ribbon. I am going to go ahead and open this so that y'all can see this wonderful inside. And this is truly a wow, wow, wow. Because what I've done is created a little stationary box. So I've created some little note cards that you could give out to someone in your office at home or you could put them in a gift bag and we're going to make some coordinating envelopes to go along with it so what we have here is a four by six dollar tree notepad doesn't have to be dollar tree but you can use a four by six notepad that you can get from anywhere and i covered it in some of that beautiful paper and then i just matted a cut apart and added as the decorative element on this and then over here i decided that i would just add a few sweet treats and just tuck them in right here so that the person who's getting this, not only will they get something beautiful, but they'll also have a little piece of chocolate to nibble on. So here at the top, I am just going to take out a few of these, but I have strips of paper that are designed to fit inside of this envelope, but I am not decorating these, but I will be including a pack of stickers and cut aparts so that the person who receives it can decorate their own little card and feel as though they too are a crafter if they aren't. And so to close it, you just squeeze your ribbon back through that little opening and there you have it. So here's what we're going to need to make it. Now this project will have a lot of moving pieces. So for those of you who are members of my monthly members group at the Poshi level and higher, I do send out a daily supply list. So make sure you're checking the community post if you're Poshi level or higher to receive your daily supply list. For those of you who are not members of my monthly members group at the Poshi level or higher, or you're not members of the monthly members group at all, I will have this supply list available on my website and the link will be in the description box below. So this is a chipboard project and I am using 
medium weight chipboard on this. If you don't have chipboard, you can substitute whatever it is you think is going to work, whether that is a shoe box or cereal boxes, whatever it is you think will work to strengthen that Dollar Tree um, gift box. So I have two pieces of medium weight chipboard that measures seven and five eighths. I have already added my double stick tape to all of my project pieces. And then I have four strips that measure one and one eighths by seven and five eighths. Then I have four strips that measure four and five eighths by one and one eighth. Then I have one piece that measures one by four and three quarters. I have that piece of four by six to cover the notebook. And I have four pieces of seven and five eighths by four and five eighths. And this is for the inside of the box and the outside. So I chose to use two different patterns and this paper really is a lightweight cardstock. But on this project, you can use any weight that you want. Then I have a piece that measures nine and three quarters by three. I have four pieces of four by seven um, writing paper for the note cards. And then I have four envelope pieces that measure 10 and a half by six. Then I will be using one of the Dollar Tree notebooks and it is a four by six. And then I have two strips that measure 10 and five eighths by one and three eighths. So those are your pieces to start. Now we might pull in some cut aparts or something else if you want in your project. So I am going to bring in my scoreboard and I'm going to bring in my Dollar Tree gift bag. So on my scoreboard, this is measuring at 10 and three quarters by seven and three quarters. Now all of these might not be cut the same, so go ahead and measure yours. Now the piece sizes that I've given you that we'll be using to cover this are going to fit if you're working with a box that falls within the seven and a half by 11 inch range. So I have this in on the 10 and three quarter inch side and I'm going to score at four and three quarters and I'll rotate it to the opposite side and score at four and three quarters. Now, one thing you'll notice is I did not take the box apart yet. What I'm doing is I am making sure that I have my flaps folded in so that I can get a good score. So to make cutting out my tabs easier, I am going to go ahead and deconstruct my box now, if you don't want to do this, if you want to go ahead and try cutting out your tabs with the box folded, that is completely up to you. I am going to go ahead and just take my box apart at the corners because it really is not a big challenge to put it back together. All right, so now that I have my box taken apart, I am going to go ahead and just fold this so I can get good score marks on those tabs. And now you can see I have very defined score marks on the tabs. So now we're going to do what we do on every other box, which is simply free up those tabs. So I'm going to go in with my finger blade and free up my tab. And I'll do the same thing here. I'm going up to the score mark, but not through it, and freeing up that tab. Now, one of the things that I meant to do before I actually cut out my tabs was I meant to go ahead and place down these strips. That's no biggie because we can place them down now. But if you want to avoid placing them down after you have cut out the tabs, when you take the box apart, and after you have folded and scored to get a defined tab, go ahead and place down these strips. These are our side pieces that are just going to give us that decorative look. So I am just taking my piece and I'll put it there. Then I'll take my other 10 and 5 eighths by one and one eighth inch piece and we're going to place it here. And 
and now I'll just flip this over. And I've already cut out the tabs, so I can just go where the tabs are to cut through that paper. And now you can see that we have our tabs nice and free. All right, y'all, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cover the outside of this before I actually glue it together. And I decided to go with this beautiful pumpkin print again because I think it's just so pretty. So I'm going to take my piece and place it down. And again, this piece measures seven and five eighths by four and five eighths. So all I'm going to do is place it down trying to get it centered on the box. Then I'll flip this over and we'll do the same thing on this side. So I'm going to take this piece and we're going to get it put down like we did that first one. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and just place these pieces and these pieces are going to measure one and one eighth by seven and five eighths. So I am just going to peel away my tape backer. I'm going to take this piece and we're going to put it down right here on the center panel. I'm going to go ahead and flatten that out. And we're going to put this piece right here on the front. Flip that over and we'll flatten this out and take this piece and we're going to put it down just like we did the other pieces. And now I can turn it to the side here and we're going to go ahead and place these down. And I'm doing this while it's flat on the outside because it's just easier. So I'm going to take this one, place it down there, and we'll place this one. Rotate it to this side and place these two. Like I said, there are a lot of little pieces to this project, but the end result is absolutely beautiful. And we'll go ahead and place it on this one. So I'm going to use my spatula, get everything nice and stuck, and now I'll bring in my glue, and we're going to go ahead and put this box back together. So I am going to place my glue on these tabs and we will glue our pretty box back together. I'm going to go on the inside with my spatula just to make sure I'm getting a good stick on that. And we'll do the same thing on all four sides. So I'm just going to put down some glue. Join those sides. Do the same thing over here. I'm going to stand that up and get this nice and stuck. And we'll do the same thing here. And go on the inside and get it nice and stuck. Now we have our sweet little box, but we're not done. Let's just go ahead and fold over and you can see just how good looking this actually is. So we're going to open our box and I am going to bring in my chipboard pieces. And before I put them down, I want to make sure that they're going to fit. So let's do a test fit. And what you're checking for is you want to make sure that it's not hitting that fold mark so that your box can fold and that it fits inside of the sides. And mine does, so I am just going to take these pieces and cover that chipboard. 
So you're only going to have two pieces of decorative paper left that are this size and they will cover your chipboard. So I am just removing that tape backer. I'm going to take this and just place it down. If you don't feel comfortable doing it this way, just start out with a 12 by 12 piece of paper and place the chipboard on there and then cut around as needed. So let's go ahead and do the other one. And so I'll take this one, we're going to place it down And so now we can remove the tape backer from the back of the chipboard. We're going to take this piece and just slide it in. And we'll do the same thing with this piece. So I'll peel away the tape backer. We're going to take this piece, slide it in, and place it down. All right, y'all, so now we're going to take our final two and put them down and the construction of this box will be complete. So I'm just going to take this piece, place it on the inside, and get it stuck. Place it on the inside. And get it stuck. All right, y'all, so when we had the box flat, I actually should have placed my handle points at that point, but I didn't. So I'm going to show you how to place those handles if you do the same thing that I did and you close that box. So I am just going to take this and I'm going to make a mark here and here where I want that to be. And then I'm going to take my paper piercer and just punch a hole so that I'll know how far to cut. So what I'm going to do is going to take a little bit of finagling, but it can be done after the box has been assembled. So where I punch those holes, that is going to be the point where I know I need to cut. So all I'm going to do is I'm holding this and I'm going to cut my opening. Now when you do yours, cut your opening while your box is still flat. And so I'll just stand it up and I've already made those slits. So I'm very carefully going to cut across. And then I'll do the same thing in the back. So I'm just going to very carefully drag across. Now I might have to go back and clean that up a little bit because I'm cutting backwards to my normal way of cutting. And then I can just take that out and then I'll use my bone folder to go in and straighten everything out. And see, even when we make what we think is a mistake, it isn't, it's usually fixable. And as Bob Ross would say, it's a happy accident. So all is not lost, we were able to fix it, no biggie. So that is how that opening is going to be. So what I'm going to do here is just make a mark and then I'll take my paper piercer and just pierce a hole right there. I couldn't use my crocodile big bite on this part because it's too deep. So now that I have my holes punched, I have this beautiful black crinkled seam binding. I am just going to cut off a little piece of that and double it, and then I'll feed it through that hole. Tie myself a knot. Trim some of that away. And then I can take the other half and feed it through this hole. Let's go ahead and just push it through. I'm going to tie a knot.
and I'll trim away that little bit. And so now we have that handle, y'all. We can just take this piece, and when we fold it up, we just feed that handle through that opening and pull it closed. And you have another beautiful box, but we're not finished yet. So I'm going to open this. I'm going to take this strip and place it down in the middle. Then I'm going to take my glue and I'm going to place glue on these pieces, my tabs. And then I'll glue the side that has the ribbon to this actual tab. And we'll do the same thing over here. So we're just going to take that tab and glue it. And you can see that I glued it to the portion that has the ribbon. And so now we're going to bring in the piece that measures one by four and three quarters. And we're going to create that little divider that we'll be putting right here. Now I have cut mine just a little bit long so that I can trim it if I need to. I am going to reinforce this with a small piece of chipboard and this chipboard measures one by four and three quarters. And I'm going to take this and just place it down. And go ahead and trim away some of that excess. And then I'll fold over. I'm going to trim away that and trim away this excess. We're going to take this piece and we're going to put it in here, but to make sure that we have the positioning right, I am going to take my notebook and put it in. I haven't covered the notebook yet, but that is where it's going to sit. So I'm going to leave that notebook in and I'm going to take this piece, add some glue to the three raw edges of the chipboard. And then I'll take this and I'm going to put it in, but I want to make sure that I'm not putting it in so that it hits that notebook. I want a little bit of space between the notebook and the chipboard piece. So I am just going to press down and hold this in place for just a few seconds. And so now while that's drying, I'll go ahead and lift out the notebook, move that over to the side, and we're going to bring in this piece that measures four by six to cover the notebook. Now I will be trimming some away because I want to leave some of that black open at the top. So I am going to peel away my tape backer. I am going to take this piece and just place it right there so that a lot of that black is showing at the top open this and trim away the excess paper. And so now we have our little notebook that I'll tuck right in there. We'll come back and decorate this in just a few minutes, but we're going to go ahead and make the pocket for the top. And to make the pocket, I am using a piece that measures nine and three quarters by three. I'll bring in my scoreboard and on the nine and three quarter inch side, I'm going to score at one, rotate it and score at one. Then on the three inch side, I'm going to score at half an inch. So I'll go ahead and Fold and burnish my scores. 
take my finger blade and I am going to remove the corner pieces. And you can see that on this paper, I didn't waste any of it because I have the actual label here at the bottom, but I can fold that under so that I can use all of that paper and not have any scrap. So I'm going to take my glue, place some glue right here. Then I'll do the same thing over here, place my glue. And then I'll place glue on these pieces. And then we also need to place some glue along the bottom here so that everything will stay stuck. And then we can take this, place it in that box, press back, get everything nice and stuck and in place. And how pretty is that? So I'm going to use my bone folder and just get that stuff. All right, y'all, so this beautiful box is complete. Now we just need to add some cards and envelopes. So I'm going to show you how to make the cards and I'll show you how to make one envelope and then we'll decorate. So what I'm putting in mind are four pieces that measure four by seven. And I'm not folding or decorating because I want the person receiving this to be able to decide how they want to use it. So then we need to make an envelope that'll fit these cards because when they're folded, they are going to be four by three and a half. So I have a piece of my decorative paper and you would need four of these pieces that measure 10 and a half by six. And on the six inch side, we are going to score at three quarters of an inch, rotate it to the opposite six inch side and score at three quarters of an inch. And then we'll turn it to the 10 and 3 quarter inch side and we're going to score at 4 and at 8 and 1 8. Then we'll simply fold and burnish our scores. And then what we're going to do is we are going to cut here, cut here, cut here, cut here, cut here, here, and then we'll cut in on this line coming down. So I'm just going to use my finger blade and cut in, cut in, cut, cut, cut there, cut here, and cut there. and then I'll remove that piece. And that is how you make a nice, quick and easy envelope. We fold up, we're going to take our glue and place our glue right there on the ends. Then I'll place a little bit of glue right there. And then we can fold up and isn't that a beautiful envelope? So when you're using double-sided paper to make envelopes, the inside is just going to be gorgeous, such as this one. So now I have an envelope that I can add to the inside right there. We're going to go ahead and decorate this strip. So I have a piece that measures half an inch by seven and three quarters, and I'm going to place that right there. But on top of that, I'm going to place down this one eighth inch strip and I think I cut this to about one eighth by eight and a half maybe, but that'll change because I will be trimming away some of this. So 
So I'm going to take this and just put it down in the center. So all I'm doing is just giving myself a little decorative look to this. And then I'm going to get that nice and stuck. Use my scissors to trim away that excess. So now I'll take my glue and I'm going to put some glue on the back. And now I can take this piece and we're just going to place it down. And you can see that that instantly adds just a little elegant look to that inside pocket. So then what I decided is I want to put something right here but I want a little pop of color. So I'm just going to take this piece and place it down with a very thin black border around it. So I am going to add a little bit of glue to this. And I'll place it right here. And like I said, I just want a very thin border around it. I'm going to use my scissors and trim. And I like how this looks because when you open it, you're probably not expecting that pop of orange but I think that it works beautifully. So I'm going to take some of my glue so that we can get it nice and stuck. Stand it up to make sure that I have it straight. So now I'm going to take my book out so that I can add just a little bit of decoration to it. And so I'm going to add this one that says Hello Pumpkin to the notebook. But I'm going to add just a little bit of glue. And so I'm placing it down on this cream paper with a little cream border. I'll trim it out. Then I'm going to add a black border. So I am going to use some more of my glue. You can use tape or your tape runner. Take that piece, place it down with a nice little black border. And you can see how this little cut apart really pops. So I am just going to trim out. So now that I have my pumpkin cut apart outlined in the cream and the black, it's really going to stand out and pop against this background. So I'm going to go ahead and add some glue And I'm going to take this and put it down just like that. And now that is extremely pretty. Bring my box back in. We'll place that there. And you can see just how elegant this actually looks. And you'd never know that it started out as a Dollar Tree gift box. So now I'm just going to take this little section here, grab a piece of scrap, and we're going to make a little holder for the candy that we'll put right here. All right, so what I did was I cut out a piece of scrap that measures three and seven eighths by four and a half. And all I'm going to do is take it and wrap it like this. So I am going to take some glue, place glue along the side here, place glue along the bottom. And then we're just going to take this, fold it over, make sure that it's going to fit inside. So now we have that stuck here at the bottom. And we have a little opening that we can drop in a candy or two. I am just going to take one little chocolate and place it right in there. You can actually place whatever it is you want to place in there. I thought it would be nice to have a little treat. Then I can close that. I have these super fabulous stickers from the Dollar Tree 
aren't these just adorable? They fall right in theme with that country farmhouse crafting that a lot of us like to do. And it just really stands out. So I think what I'm going to do is I am going to take one of these little buffalo plaid hearts because I don't want to go too crazy on that difference in color. And we're going to tuck that right in there. Then I'm going to take another buffalo plaid heart and I'll put these on my envelope. And so to finish this off, you can fill this with some of your favorite stickers or pieces of ephemera. You can simply tuck them in the pocket and that way, whoever you are giving this to, they can pull out the cards and create some nice little cards and then embellish them with the stickers and ephemera that you might have included. And like I said, you can make a non-crafter feel like a crafter by giving them a little kit like this. So I am going to go ahead and close this. So then I have these cute little pieces of Kazercraft ephemera and I'm just going to dump out and find something that's going to work. And so what I found is one that says beautiful. And I think that that works perfectly for me. So I just need to figure out where I want it. And I think I want it right about there. So I am going to take my glue, place some glue on this. And I'm going to put it right there. Let me just make sure I have that nice and straight. And then I'm going to take this piece and this metal has holes in it. So I'm going to use just two of my brads, my mini brads, to fill in those holes to give this a nice little look to finish it off. And so now I'm going to take my hot glue, place just a little hot glue on those brads a little bit right there and a little bit there. And now I'll take this and put it down. I'm going to look at it to make sure that I have it nice and straight. And so as you can see, it doesn't take much to give us this nice beautiful finish to our project. And I'll give you one more look at the inside. We have a four by six notepad. There's actually room in here for two of those if you wanted to add two. Then over here I added just a little piece of chocolate that I decorated inside of this little baggie here. Created a divider to separate the two. Then we added a pocket up here at the top and we're putting all of our stationary papers here in the top along with the envelopes. That's how easy it is to make these beautiful stationary boxes using a Dollar Tree gift box. And I'll bring in that first one so that you can really get a good look at how beautiful these actually are. And it's so simple to do. So guys, I hope that you have enjoyed this super sweet way to take a Dollar Tree gift box, line it with some chipboard and create a stationary box. If you have liked this project and if it has inspired you, please hit that like button. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, love to have you join. As always, please be safe, be kind, happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.